Hello, hello, this is Atsushi and I will start the Sashiko live streaming in English. Um, I will be doing the Sashiko stitching while I am on live. I am in live. <coughs> your question, I will answer your question as much as I can, but today I have a topic to discuss, so I may not be able to answer as much, but I will write down your questions and I hope I can answer that in some times later. Um, Today I will talk about sorry. borrow. Today's topic is borrow. Today's topic is about borrow. I have talked about borrow so many times on my website, on my YouTube videos, and you know, pretty much I. It's a really, really popular topic, so I have talked about it a lot, and I probably used, I used my samples to discuss about what Boro is, and it might be a repetition for some of you who watched the my videos already, but I would like to talk again what Boro is, and um, one of the reasons I'm going to talk about Boro today is that. Today is the actually opening day for the Japan Society Borough Exhibition in New York. If you live in New York, if you can travel to New York, it is very good opportunity for you to look at the authentic borough. Um, I'm kind of hesitant to define what is authentic and what is not authentic, but if I can define the authentic borough, the exhibition has the authentic borrow right now, so it is very much recommended to be there if you like borrow and if you want to see or if you, I think I think you can touch them. I don't know. At least when they were in Japan, they let us allow to touch it. So it may be possible to touch it. It may not be. I don't know. You will give the questions via DM. Sure, thank you. I may not be able to answer DM neither, but like I'll try my best. <coughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay, I will stitch another 10 minutes or so, then I will move to the actual story about Boro. Well, actually, well, I will talk about Boro while I'm stitching some of those for like 15 minutes or so, then I will bring up the samples that I made, two samples. And I will talk about what borrow is. Okay, let's start stitching. <clears throat> I feel so quiet. It is so quiet recently because of those. You know. I hope your place is not in panic. As of now, it is so scary, so you know, so scary, so worrying. I hope your place is not in panic, and I hope you can keep the ordinary. I hope you can keep the ordinary days without being panic because of those viruses. <clears throat> As of now, our place is fine. My daughter is still in school, so. Let's see, let's see, we we gotta keep the usual in this kind of condition, right? So, Boro's definition, does anybody have a definition for Boro? Definition is not, again, okay, definition is not the description to define what is good or bad. It's just a description to have the mutual understanding before we talk about something further, further, further. So, for me, borrow is a fabric heavily used. Um, because of that usage, heavy usage, the fabric get torn or damaged, like holes or, you know, those torn. <clears throat> they, the Japanese didn't have enough wealth to replace that fabric to new one, 
So they have to stitch or they have to patch. So repetition of those stitching made fabric thicker and made fabric more patchworked. In my definition, in my understanding, the result of those heavily using heavy usage as well as the heavy patching, heavy stitching, the repetition, blah, repetition of those stitching and using using the fabric is called borrow. So it's not a technique, it's mainly a result of sashiko stitching. And then we call those stitching sashiko, right? So <clears throat> borrow is actually a result of repetitive rep repetitive sashiko stitching. <laughs> I cannot speak today. Come on. Uh, my mouth is not moving, I guess. So, sometimes I see a discussion, either this is the sashiko stitching, or boro stitching, or sashiko techniques, or boro techniques, or sashiko style, or boro style. So, in those discussions, um, people discuss either sashiko or boro, like sashiko versus boro, which is which. Um, in my understanding, sashiko and boros are on the same line. It's the same thing. So, sashiko, then borrow. You, we do sashiko and then borrow. That's my definition. Uh, in another word, sashiko can be a verb. So, let's say I am enjoying sashiko right now. I do, sa I do practice sashiko stitching. So, sashiko can be a, a verb. Like, ultimately speaking, ultim ultimately speaking I can say I sashiko this fabric, and it, it is the same in Japanese as well. Many people use sashiko as the verb as well. However, boro doesn't really become a verb. So I do not say I do boro. That sounds quite strange to me, and there's no such a thing as I do boro in Japanese neither. So, boro is more like a result, and this is so boro is not gonna be the verb. And sashiko can be a verb and also the result of stitching. So, those are kind of like a basic definition of boro and sashiko. Then we can talk about what is boro and what is sashiko again from there. For us, not for you, for us. We all can have a different definition and different understanding of sashiko, and you should have your own. But I just want to make sure that we have mutual understanding before we talk about something more deeper or broader. Whew. I hope it makes sense. I'm not a big fan of definition, <laughs> because definition sometimes make people think that it is the right answer. So if I say that sashiko is this and boro is this, many people understand that that's the answer. I do not want to do it because definition can be different in different places, different origin, different time. So, and one of the principles of sashiko or even Japanese philosophy is that words, like what I'm talking about, what I'm talking right now, words or description, those words are not enough to understand one concept. And I strongly agree with that. I strongly agree with that the sashiko or even boro cannot be described only by word. Um, instead, the Japanese believe that the one concept or principle can be understood by practicing it. So, <clears throat> I feel the same. I want people to do sashiko stitching to understand sashiko. Same as, you know, boro. I want them to try to do sashiko stitching to make boro, then I think we can have a mutual understanding of boro. So I do not like to define what is what in word first, because that could ruin somebody's understanding. But at the same time, it is very important to invite the others to the same understanding first to avoid any misunderstanding is, you know, especially I'm talking in my second language and this is quite unique, interesting, and in, in a good way, and twisted in a bad way. The Japanese culture is pretty twisted <laughs> culture, 
So I just want to make sure that we can have the mutual understanding for that. So as a summary, sashiko is the practice, only practice of sashiko, I mean, I'm sorry, sashiko is a orderly hand stitching practice that Japanese did a long time ago and has been doing for the purpose of purpose of <laughs> purpose of used to be a survival but now purpose of enjoying it enjoying stitching but pretty much appreciating the fabric is the keyword and the borrow is the result of one result not all the result the borrow is one result of ultimate repetition of sashiko stitching okay i hope it makes sense sorry about my english today for some reason i don't think i'm speaking as good as usual well i know why my friend uploaded the good video about how to pronounce english better and i'm really occupied my brain is occupied by those techniques so i'm kind of thinking before i talk uh, since I do not have any <clears throat> script on this live streaming, I have to think about this, what I talk about as well as my pronunciation and stuff like that. So my... it's overwhelming. <laughs> it is a little bit overwhelming. But, but I'm gonna get... I'm gonna get used to it. I'm gonna get used to it. I'm gonna get used to it. Just give me some seconds, some time. So... The borrow you can see in New York City right now is the collection of Mr. Tanaka Chuzaburo. <laughs> I forgot the first name. Mr. Tanaka. So Mr. Tanaka is the researcher. He, I think he has a PhD in folk art, folk culture in Japanese, uh, Japanese folk culture. And he found the borrow beautiful and he traveled all over the northern part of Japan. To, well, northern part of Japan is the poor, 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 very, very poor area in Japan before the industrial uh, industrial revolution. So there were a lot of sashiko and boro pieces left. And he traveled many, many cities to collect those sashiko pieces as well as the boro pieces. And that became a collection and then the... Amuse, which is the entertainment company in Japan, um, decided to have a museum in Asakusa. And they had to close it because of the um, few few reasons, I think. But one of the reasons is that the building was too old that they had to rebuild it, reform it. So they, they had to close those buildings, those museums. That was the great museum, by the way. You could touch the borrow pieces, you could read the stories about it. Again, you could touch the borrow. That was one of the great things about the museum. But it was closed last year, March, and after that, those collection is traveling to the world, in the world. Um, I, I'm aware that it went to the Australia, I think, Sydney, and it was in China for quite a long time. And then now it's in New York, the Japan Society. <laughs> I taught Sashiko in Japan Society, so I'm so happy to visit one day there to look at Boro. But I still live a little bit far from that, and then probably it's not a good time to travel to the big city right now, so I will probably not gonna go now. But if I go, I will let you let everybody know that I'm going, so we can probably meet. If you live in New York City, too. By the way, so those borrow collection is actually from those ordinary Japanese people. Um, so it is really kind of authentic, for that matter. It's not. Like, I wouldn't probably call my borrow stitching authentic because it doesn't have that many years of time to be used. We try to use it as much as we can, but at the same time, it's not that heavily used yet. So, it is a good opportunity to look at the really good borrow. I've been there, I've been to the... I had been 
I had been to the Asakusa Museum for many, many times when I was in Japan. And for me, quite honestly speaking, quite honestly speaking, I feel a little bit of fear, was scared, like a little bit mixed feeling of respect as well as a little bit of fear that they had to stitch that much. It is beautiful, it is beautiful, but since I do sashiko stitching, um, the amount of sashiko, amount of stitching, and also the amount of those stories, or the people had to sleep in those blankets, people had to use the fabric, until that extent was a little bit scary for me. So... And the one thing I want everybody to know is that Boro is a representation of poverty, right? Um, if they had enough money, they would have not made Boro. Does it make sense? Um, if they had enough money to buy new clothes, they would have used the new clothes. Those people who had a lot of money, like samurai or like those aristocratic people, they did not make Boro. The people who made borrow is the ordinary peasant, pe peasant, pe peasant, the farmers, and also even like below that farmer. The Japanese had a pretty strict, uh, strict hierarchy, social hierarchy for that. So those are the people who were suppressed by government and they didn't have enough money to enjoy their life. That's why they stitched. That's why they had to stitch to survive, to protect their families. So, although it is very beautiful, and I, you know, I get inspired by that a lot, I want them to understand that it is a product of suffering, for that matter. Um, therefore, I want them to know that there is a little bit of concept of shame. The more the fabric has patches, it represents the poorer they were the more poor they were. When they are poor, the Japanese has a very strong concept of feeling of shame, so they were proud of what they were making, at the same time they were probably not 100% happy about it. Then the question comes up, why did they have to use different patches, different color patches and like, you know, different places like that. Some people say that the Japanese boro is the beauty at random. So they did not have a choice, they did not have any colors, so they had to put whatever they had wherever they could. So the beauty, the result is very much, very much at random. That's why it's so beautiful. I understand that interpretation, but I kind of do not agree with that, like, at random. The reason is, do they really, do they re really didn't think about where to put it? So I make boro too. I do such stitching and I try to make some of the boro pieces. When since I have a choice of fabric, I try to be kind of... I try to make a more interesting piece. It's kind of hum, hum, human nature to think about what is the good, what is... how to make it beautiful. So that human nature might be there, have been there as well. We cannot deny those human nature to be more beautiful, more cool, even in the extreme poverty. So yes, they did not have enough fabric to choose from, but probably they had several kinds of fabric collected from the, you know, piece of swatch from somewhere, or they probably had those pride, or those little bit of human nature to be more beautiful in those extreme case scenario. That's why I keep saying that the boro is the product of Japanese pride and shame, both. It is not... it doesn't come very naturally together. 
you know, borrow, I mean, the pride and shame doesn't really come naturally together, but I think that borrow has both of them in one piece, and therefore it is very unique and very interesting. And I will talk about why I came to that conclusion, and the, pretty much the reason is that I tried to make one of those two. Just a second, I... Let me finish this much thread so I can move to the samples. Sorry about that. I enjoyed this small Asanoha patterns. If you watch my previous live streaming, it's in on the YouTube, I have been doing a big piece like free, freestyle sashiko on the 3 meter squares fabric or either denim either denim jeans, pants, or denim jacket. Everything requires a lot of fabric, like, like a lot of grabbing, a lot of rota rotating the fabric, moving. This one is just a small piece of small fabric with a small asanoha pattern, so I can just keep stitching, stitching, stitching without even thinking anything. It's so good. So I'm kind of enjoying. I'm enjoying stitching right now while I'll talk about Boro and Sashiko. So let me finish this much and I can move to the samples. Well, I mean, you know, the whole purpose of this live streaming is for me to enjoy Sashiko while I share the non edited version, like original picture of Sashiko stitching. So it's all. It's all good, it's all good. As long as I can enjoy it, that's all good. <laughs> my my enjoyment comes first. I'm sorry to say it, but like my It's pretty selfish live streaming for that matter. But I will try to answer the question as well. Ah. So does everybody now know the word borrow is? Because I'm going to talk about borrow a lot today. So if you don't know it, I will explain that again briefly. Okay. Look at that. Look at this. Woohoo. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Has been a long time since I did this swatch. It's been like six months, so I, I enjoyed a lot. Ah, it's not straight. Well, it's okay. Okay, so I will talk about <coughs> borrow today a little bit. So some of the borrow you can find not like the borrow in the museum should be clean and fresh. Um, in the process of exhibition, I think they cut to clean. So they probably clean them. Uh, you can probably touch them. But some of the borrow from the antique market or even like from somebody's house is quite dirty. The reason of that dirty borrow is because they had to use it for many times. Uh, sometimes borrow is quite fragile to the 
affliction or even like washing, sometimes water can vanish all of the like fabric melts in the water. <laughs> the worst case scenario, they will go into the drain by washing it. So when I talk about boro in the workshop, I have to kind of explain what boro is. And the best way to explain that is to have the sample. So <clears throat> let's see. Look at look at here. Like they this is like a little frayed fabric. If they had to keep these frayed fabric on the fabric, <laughs> they had to keep those frayed part on the fabric because those small fabric could be actually make the fabric warmer. This is a very, very small fabric, small blanket, probably for the size of baby. We made it. We made it from the sc scrap of boro. There are the jacket or some like blanket which became boro, as well as there's a very, very small fragment of vintage fabric which couldn't be boro. Um, the difference of those the boro as the piece and the boro fragment that couldn't be borrowed is the sashiko stitching and since I can do the sashiko I try to make that borrow too. <coughs> and borrow requires the kind of a process of using it as well. So if I patchwork a few things together and then leave it like it, I don't really call it borrow yet. Like I sometimes call borrow to be fabric. But I it's like borrow requires more time to use it requires more process to use it and I'm talking about the process of using it for like years years can be 50 years can be 100 years generations of time and uh, this one is more like a little bit of like artificial for that matter because we try to use it as much as we can before to make a borrow so this 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 fabric um, some of the visible mending visible mending project um, they kind of cut off those edges of frayed denim and they put the patches and they make sashiko stitching and I have no problem with that, they're beautiful but the, those like a trimming the edge, trimming the unnecessary part of the fabric is kind of against to the borrow's concept because they wanted to make the fabric warmer, fabric more stronger so they tried to keep it as much as they could. They wanted to keep as much fabric as they wanted. That's why this has like most of the boro has like similar look as this one. Uh, many boros are kind of patched from the backside. Uh, <laughs> I do have some techniques. I do have some you know techniques to follow the Japanese sashiko, but in boro, those techniques are not that necessary. You can. I usually do not make any knots on the sashiko stitching, but when I do boro, if I have to make knots, I do make knots. It's it's not. There's no problem with that. So, boro again is those. This is the piece of boro with patchworking. Can I show? Can you show us the sample of fabric boro? somewhere I can try to find it somewhere yes but not today sorry I might have to go into the boxes you mean talking about like you're talking about the sample of the borrowed it's really like a piece of it's a piece of these small swatches so I will probably have to find it but I will write it down so I can talk about it next time just a second, just a second, just a second. So it's it's pretty much the patchwork, for that matter. They had to do the patchwork, but at the same time, they didn't have enough good fabric, a very fragile fabric. So, for example, this patch had a hole already. Before they patched the fabric, before... <laughs> the, this patch already had those holes and by using this part of the fabric it gets more damaged so when we do the patchwork when we patch the denim we use the I even I use the like, 
nice fabric so that the fabric can last longer. I like that idea and I do that. At the same time, they did not have a choice to use the good thick fabric, so they had to use something already was part of part of Borrow. Part of borrow. Um, that's why it became like... like this one is already through the fraying a little bit here. I'll show you a little... Just a second, okay, vintage fabric to be So this is something that we can call borrow. This is like borrow to be, I guess. Look at that. Well, 90% of the job is done by mother, so I'm not... Look at this. Ay, ay, ay. So those... Uh, where is that? Fabric is also a... Com mm, sorry, how can I say that? So the f fabric is consists by the thread, correct? Like any kind of thread, usually cotton, but they, you know, they were woven, right? Like weaving. So the fabrics are kind of woven together in many different ways. So ultimately speaking, they became thread after m using so many times. Look at those like thread. This was part of the fabric, but th that became like a thread after using so many times, after over so many hours of using it, so many years of using it. So this makes the borrow so beautiful and so valuable as the art. At the same time, um, the best borrow I can define is actually the pieces we use every day. The reason I'm saying that is the Japanese people back in there, back in like 400 years ago, 500 years ago, who made the borrow, was using those fabric every single day. And what I'm trying to do right now is to recreate that kind of habit or ordinary days. So I try to use as much as... I don't buy new clothes anymore. I stitch, I try to patch whatever I have. Uh, one of the things I'm kind of proud of myself is this, my hard case. It used to be a like whole nice card case, but after ten years of using it, this uh, focus, this fabric became a thread a little bit, the same as this one, same as here. Do you see the similar idea? So this was a new fabric. This Japanese, I'm sorry, the Japanese windmill, windmill. The f fabric maker made this fabric, but it was not a vintage fabric. But f after using 10 years in heavy, like heavy friction inside of my pocket, that's outside of my pocket, so those friction made this fabric so weak like this. And I kept stitching and stitching so the th fabric stayed together. At the back, I kind of patched everything over because that was so bad inside, I couldn't even fix it. But again, by using this fabric, probably after five more years, this fabric will start deteriorating. Ah, it started kind of fraying again. Then we can see the another another layer of fabric coming out from the inside. So the repetition of those process will make those fabric so-called borrow. So I am perfectly fine. I have no problem with people calling the borrow inspired patchwork or patchwork as a borrow. There's no problem with that. But I want to share the kind of stories that Japanese people had to go through. So they had to use the fabric. They had to use the fabric and therefore the fabric started fraying, the fabric started damaging, getting damaged, and that became borrow. Another example is this. This is like a patchwork and borrow to be. I hope I'm not so this one oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is like a nice Japanese vintage katazome fabric. And uh, since it is kind of fragile, I patch it together and I'm working on sashiko stitching like this. So by using 
by using this fabric it will start getting damaged this is like a vintage fabric but it's nice vintage fabric <laughs> um, it doesn't really make sense but it is a kind of nice vintage fabric it's a stronger vintage fabric. Not the vin Sakura. Sorry, the cat is following me a lot. I'm okay, thank you. So this is the vintage fabric in a good condition. It's very good. It's in a very good condition. That it looks really, really fine. So you know, I patched work those three like a quilting. There's no quilting batting inside, but I patched work this, and it is nice. It is very nice, and some people might call this borrow patchworking. I have no problem with that, but for me, I would, I would need more time to use this fabric. It can be as a blanket, it can be as a tablecloth, whatever it is. By using it, the fabric will start getting damaged. Then I will stitch over it, and then I will patch something else, and ideally I would like to patch the same strength fabric, so stronger fabric than the fragile uh, vintage fabric. But the repetition of that will make the fabric like this. So this is kind of the same concept, same concept, just this one is... I tried to recreate a few hundred years of stitching and this one is just new as the patchwork. I hope it makes sense. And it doesn't have to be any like patchwork or doesn't have to be a blanket or something. It can be just like the denim. This is my denim that I'm wearing pretty much every day. And the denim got some hole here. So I stitched with the vintage I mean, Japanese, I mean, sashiko fabric like this. The sashiko, ah, the fabric I stitched with sashiko, I patched the work with like like this. So the more I wear that, this denim denim part will start deter deter. <laughs> it will get damaged here. <laughs> it will get damaged here, and then this might show some of the vintage. I mean, some of the sashiko fabric inside of this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna go with the denim, but that's something that I do for the denim plus borrow. This denim itself is pretty strong because I did the sashiko stitching over, so I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to make it like a borrow borrow. But, yeah. Let's see. By the way, I do machine wash here. I wash this one in a washing machine, so it will probably come off very sooner than I think. I don't wash this one in the washing machine. It's really risky. You could damage everything. And, you know, that's a really good damage to think about it. But the good point about like the another perspective is that the Japanese didn't have a washing machine when they made Boro. So I probably shouldn't use the washing machine to recreate the same idea. Okay. So this one, I think I have some photos, and if you'd like to have a closer look, I can make a video about it. Well, I probably made a video somewhere, but I have a better, better camera, so I can make a closer look about it, too. Okay, it's a very good sample. It's very soft, comfy, doesn't smell bad. Oh, this is the back side of the... It's like stitching, 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 stitching to keep the fabric together. So the By the way, this is front. This is front and this is the back side. Just, yeah, it's the front side. And this is the back side. Again, this boro kind of represent not a kind of... In my understanding, boro represents the shame, so... When we feel shame, we try to hide that. Okay, I will do a little bit of sashiko stitching and then today I will finish today's live streaming. Whew, a lot of talking, a lot of talking. 
but I hope it some of the explanation made sense a little bit. It is sometimes confusing to understand what boro is or what sashiko is. So I hope this helped a little bit to understand what they are. Well, I mean, I'm a... I'm fortunate. I, it isn't my fortunate that I can do sashiko stitching because any can, anything can be boro by doing sashiko. So, and anybody can do sashiko too. Many people think that it's a very difficult, many, uh, not a difficult, or even like strict stitching. There's a rule like this and you have to follow that, blah, 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 blah. Um, in my understanding, we don't have those I mean, those go uh, those rules or regulations. So you can do what you want to do, but I want you to, want them to focus on the origin, the Japanese. So when they focus on Japanese, I want them to try to learn the Japanese concept of philosophy before, behind that. So one of the, the one of the things I shared today as a Japanese is that the concept of shame. I don't think the Japanese back then made a borrow to show off or sh be admired by somebody. They had to stitch and they probably felt shameful by stitching. Yet they wanted to be somewhat make something beautiful. That is so complicated, but I think that's what makes things more beautiful, right? Like, complication makes things more beautiful. So today, I'm not gonna do borrowing. This is Sashiko stitching, and I will... Wow! 45 minutes already? That's a long time. So I will stop stitching after this. Well, let's see, I wanna stitch a little more, so I might keep going. So if you have any question about Sashiko stories, Boro stories, please leave the comments. If you're watching this, I will upload this to the YouTube after the Instagram is story days. <laughs> story has only 24 hours of time to record it. So after that, I upload it to the YouTube. So if you're watching it from the YouTube, please leave the comments so I can. I will use your comments to as a discussion topic next time. Uh, I will not answer the questions about technical issues because first I don't want to make this live streaming as like a tutorial like with teaching opportunities because I don't want to be irresponsible of my teaching. I would like to make sure that I teach everything for those who wish to learn Sashiko. So I have those in-person workshop and online workshop where I can be fully attentive to you. So I don't want to do the, like, you know, quick teaching is the last thing I want to do. So I don't want to do the live streaming teaching here. But at the same time, I would like to share as many stories as possible while I make stitching. Hello, hello from Turkey. Wow, from anywhere, from everywhere. That's so awesome. Thank you so much for watching. So every actually a lot of things are already online. I made a lot of tutorial videos on YouTube and many stories already, many articles about Sashiko and Boros and everything related to that. So if you could read them or watch them, that'd be very much appreciated. And after that, although there are a lot of there are millions of topics that I have not covered yet. <laughs> That's why I have a Patreon for those who I can publish my honest insight before I go to public, <laughs> where I could have been. You know, I, internet is a kind of scary place, so if I say something I really feel, sometimes regardless of what I actually feel, people misunderstood different. People understood me differently, so I try to not to be public as. 
much as I want to. I am also not, you know, from Brazil. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody's from everywhere. That's what internet is. That's what the internet makes everything capable. Can you believe it? Please watch this live streaming while you make stitching as well. You know, what I do, besides those explain, besides those time to explain the specific theme, what I do is pretty much stitching. So you don't even have to look at what I'm doing. It's the same. Every week, every time, it's the same as same stitching. So, just, you know, watch this live streaming as the radio or something. Okay, music. <laughs> I don't know if my voice is not that good, but, you know. Don't focus on my videos so much, but I want you to kind of stitch too. The doing laundry is perfectly great. Like doing something very ordinarily, ordinarily. And however, that makes kind of a community, which probably Japanese people had a few hundred years ago by doing sashiko stitching. They had a community to talk, to complain, to be part of something. Um, you know, internet can make us very lonely. At the same time, with the good people, with a good intention, it can be a good place as a community, like somewhere, some place to be. And that's something I like to make throughout Sashiko. The place nobody judge each other. You know, we always judge ourselves. I always judge myself. You probably do judge yourself. Some way that I, we don't have to judge ourselves that much. Uh, it's impossible to say let's not judge at all. We judge, <laughs> but somewhere we do not have to judge ourselves that much. Where am I gonna go next? Just a second, okay. I'm getting so hungry. I'll probably go offline soon. Hi, Sakura. We got a cat a year ago, but the cat is not the best thing to have when you want to do Sashiko Studio or something. They love thread, they love fabric, they have a sharp nail, so... They are not the best. <laughs> well, I mean, they. Hey, Sakura, I'm it. Sakura, I'm it. Sakura, Sakura. So scary. Just a second, okay? Ah, suck. Hold on, to the end. Hold on, to the end. Hold on, to the end. No. Sakura! Yes, go, go to you! Sorry, I'm talking to the cat. I'm talking to the cat. She 
has her own tree to play. She doesn't have to come to the table to play. But of course she does, that's what she does. So yeah, sashiko stitching is very much like a meditation for me. I really don't think about the result. I mean the stitches size or like even stitches is kind of the, kind of the result of me stitching and I really don't really measure how si one size of stitching should be I kind of feel the rhythm first uh, because of that I can keep talking like this and stitching and I can more like feel relaxed when I stitch just a second okay So, I hope that you can enjoy Sashiko as well. I sometimes get a question like, how do you make stitches so even? Well, the answer is kind of tricky because I always say like, no, I'm, I'm not trying to make it even. That's why it's so even. If I try to make stitches so even, I probably don't make it even. Okay, I will finish this live streaming here. Mm, let's start here so then I can do next time. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I will come back next Tuesday. Um, if you are watching outside of the US, I believe that this weekend is the time change. Um, the, it's gonna be a summertime after this Sunday, I believe. So I will not change the time. It's gonna be 9 o'clock and in Eastern time, like US time, for the Japanese live streaming. And then 10.30 Eastern time, AM, I will switch the language to the English. Um, probably for one hour or so. Uh, I will. I don't plan to change the time for that. So it's gonna be like, you may have to adjust the time for yourself if you live outside of the U.S. If you live in outside, if you live in the U.S., it's it's whole continent, right? Like, it doesn't matter which time zone you are. Probably they're gonna switch to this summertime together. So otherwise, I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and today I talked about Boro a little bit, and everything will be on the YouTube again. Alright, have a good weekend. Bye-bye!